September is coming to an end, which means October is just around the corner, and October is notorious for bringing the potential for more severe weather, colder weather across the United States, and even a hurricane or two. So in today's forecast, we're to break down exactly what we think is going to happen throughout the month of October, beginning with the jet stream pattern, and this is really what sets up, I think, the weather pattern for the entire United States, and it's really a make or break when it comes to seeing more severe weather or even seeing hurricane activity. So beginning with the jet stream, as we go to the first week of October, it is expected to stay relatively zonal across the northern plains and the northern tier of the United States. What that essentially means is that we are not expecting any sort of large-scale storms to really impact at least the lower 48 for the most part, unless we see some sort of sneaky hurricane come out of the Gulf of Mexico or the Caribbean Sea. That's the only thing that we're really talking about, I think, over the next seven days. Now, once we go into the second and third week of October, I think things start to change a little bit. I think by the time we go into the second Second week of October, we're going to continue to see the zonal flow pattern across the northern tier of the United States, which I think is just going to continue to build heat across much of the United States, including the West Coast, the Great Plains, and as well as the East Coast. But once we get closer to the middle of October is when I think severe weather events are going to start to ramp up more as we get more of these large-scale troughs that move across the Great Plains and as well as back through the Midwest, Ohio Valley, and Southeast, and this will eventually lead to the increasing probability of severe your weather, which we'll talk more about here in just a moment. But aside from this, I think the first two weeks of October are going to start off slow, with mostly just a potential for maybe another tropical storm or hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. And then aside from that, I don't think we're going to be talking about any major severe weather events until at least middle of September. Now, this is the tornado probabilities in terms of climatology between 1982 to 2011. This is a pretty accurate representation of where we do think that there will still be a chance for severe weather in the form of tornado tornadoes across the United States throughout the month of October. Now, we are going to show you first September. Notice that there is a relatively large area that we are still looking at for the potential for a couple of, you know, severe weather setups, but overall, no really concentrated areas of severe weather. But once we go into October, really, as we go into the first couple of weeks, you're going to notice that the bulk of where we see severe weather starts to drop down to the south, and that is because we're going to start to see the return of colder weather in terms of cold blasts, and eventually, obviously, the sun is going to set sooner. The sun risers are going to be later, so there's not going to be nearly as much heat available here across, you know, the northern tier of the country for there to be severe weather. So by the second and third weeks of October, you'll notice that the bulk of severe weather that we're going to be seeing will start to shift from areas like the Midwest all the way back into parts of the Ohio Valley, the Central and Southern Plains, and then back over in the Dixie Alley. And this becomes obviously a lot more common in November and December across the Dixie Alley to see severe weather. One of the biggest reasons why we see severe weather in the month of October over a month like September is because there's a lot more warm and cold air mixing and when this mixing happens we begin to see again severe weather especially with organized low pressure systems and this is what it looks like as we go into the first week of October we're really not expecting any sort of organized severe weather over the next couple of weeks at least so we're really not talking about much severe weather but you'll notice the temperatures across the country will be around to just below average in the Midwest and then above average back over on the West Coast but as we go further into the month you're going to notice maybe one more trough kind of trying to bring some colder air to the Midwest. But again, notice there's really not much cold air at all. We're just going to continue to see this warm air build, especially with that zonal jet stream. So essentially, this is all kind of adding up here. We're going to be talking about a much warmer than average for a couple of weeks of October. And overall, we're not really going to be talking about much severe weather, but there might be something again by maybe the middle of this month that could bring one colder weather and then two, the potential for some severe weather. Now, this weather pattern that we're going to be dealing with over the next 7 to 14 days is honestly very similar to what we saw last year in terms of the weather. We didn't really see a whole lot of severe weather the first week or two of October, and then it began to gradually, you know, increase, and we also started to see a lot more of colder weather across the country. So one thing we're going to point out here over the next few days is that we are again going to stay relatively dry for most of the United States. The only area that we're really watching for over the next 7 days for any activity will one be over in the northeast with some showers and thunderstorms over the next, you know, few days, mainly from Friday until Sunday, and then back over in the Gulf of Mexico, we could see a tropical cyclone develop, which we're going to talk more about here in just a few minutes. But as we go into the second week of October, things are going to stay very, very, very quiet across much of the country. But as we get closer to the middle of the month is when I think things start to change. Now, the GFS model does indicate that we are going to see a strong and large-scale trough come out of Canada. If this does happen, it would bring much colder weather to the country. But honestly, I don't think it's going to bring a whole lot in the way of severe weather if it were to come from 
from Canada because it's not really going over the Rocky Mountains, which is where we see a lot more of that mixing end up taking place, which does lead more often than not to some severe weather setups. So that's one key thing to keep in mind. But notice we're not really that far away from probably seeing some of our first snowfall back over in the upper Midwest. Again, that is much more common as we go into the middle and end of October. So with all that said, the GFS model on the supercell composite, which essentially indicates if we're going to basically see severe weather, is basically not indicating anything as we go for throughout the first two to three weeks of October. There is hardly any values popping up on here that would indicate any sort of severe weather. So right now, severe weather looks to definitely be on the lower side of things when it comes to an overall threat across the United States. Now, in terms of rainfall, which is one thing that a lot of places need, including Ohio and even parts of West Virginia, areas that don't need rain or include the southeast like North Carolina and Tennessee, are really going to mostly just see rain on the east coast. So unfortunately, if you're in the Great Plains, things are going to be staying dry. The Midwest is going to be staying relatively dry for the next week or two. But the areas like the southeast, especially Florida, are likely to stay very active when it comes to total rainfall accumulation. Things will probably start to pick back up, though, as we go into the middle of the month. But again, a very quiet start here for the first couple of weeks of October is expected. We've already talked about two of the big changes that will be coming to the United States in October, one of which is severe weather, the second of which is the colder weather that we are going to eventually see. But the third thing is the potential for hurricanes. And obviously, September didn't really have much of that other than Hurricane Helene. And September was kind of a really below average month, in my opinion, until we actually had Helene. So it was really quiet. I think October is going to act a little bit more like September historically, where we are going to see several different tropical cyclones, including the potential for maybe even another hurricane near or even impacting the United States. So beginning with the current outlook from the National Hurricane Center, you'll notice back in the northeastern Atlantic Ocean, we do have Tropical Storm Isaac, and then we also have Tropical Depression Joyce, and we also have a newly formed Tropical Depression 12, and then behind that, we have another area of development. So things are really ramping up in the main development region when it comes to tropical cyclone activity. Now, on the flip side of things, back over in the CAG, which is the Central American Gyre, we are watching for a 50-50 shot for there to be maybe a tropical depression or storm that develops over the next five to seven days as this system eventually moves into the Gulf of Mexico. And if it does form, we could see impacts to the United States, and we're going to talk more about that here in just a moment. I do think October is going to be a very active month when it comes to tropical cyclones in the Atlantic Ocean, and this is the GEFS Ensemble members, which are going to give you an idea of where we could see the potential for a tropical storm and how intense it might get in terms of maybe hurricane strength, and then in addition to that, where these systems might end up tracking over the next week or two, and we are going to begin first with what's happening over the next few days. So again, notice there are multiple areas, but the three that I want to mostly talk about is the one back over in the Caribbean Sea that is probably going to develop later this week, then we have two other areas back over here that are both separate from each other back over in the main development region. Now, I think the biggest and most intense hurricane that we are going to see this week and perhaps over the next couple of weeks will be this area right here. It is in a very favorable environment for the potential for a major hurricane. And as of right now, Tropical Depression 12 is expected to become a major hurricane as it moves further here into the Atlantic Ocean. Behind that, we're going to be watching that system as well. But by the time we go into Wednesday and Thursday, we're not really expecting a whole lot of development here in the Caribbean Sea. Once we go into Friday and Saturday, notice this big orange blob over here. And that is where we're expecting, again, a major hurricane to more than likely develop by the middle or very end of this week. But back over in the Gulf of Mexico, things are very uncertain as of right now. There are a lot of ensemble members right now that have this at tropical depression or at most tropical storm intensity, and that would be on the very low side of things. There are a couple of members that do indicate a hurricane developing, but at this point, the odds of a hurricane developing in the Gulf of Mexico this weekend are appearing lower than yesterday. So that's good news for now. Let's hope it trends that way. Then right behind this system over here in the main development region, Region, that is where we also could see an early set hurricane develop back over there. That could give it a lot of time, by the way, to intensify in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, the good news for now is back over in the Gulf of Mexico, again, there's a widespread, but most models are currently indicating that there will not be much development, at least through this upcoming weekend, but we might see some development as we go into the following week, which could lead to maybe a tropical storm somewhere near Florida. So that'll be something to watch for. But the other good news on the flip side of things is that if a major hurricane does develop back over in the main development, region, it is more likely than not to go out to sea. It's going to be a fish storm. So if you know any fish out there, again, make sure to let them know. But aside from that, these two different cyclones that are going to develop over the next few days are likely just to remain out to sea. There is a low chance that one of these tries to sneak to the west, but I don't really expect that as of right now. So again, the trop 
Olympics are going to probably be active for the next few weeks, but it doesn't seem like many United States impacts are currently in the near future. But we'll definitely have to watch for that system in the Caribbean Sea because things could definitely change on a dime depending on several different factors. And the last thing I do want to point out is that the GFS model doesn't really have anything developing in the Gulf of Mexico, at least on the most recent run this weekend. It does show a tropical storm attempting to develop and maybe even a low end hurricane as we go into early the following week that goes towards Florida. But again, it's just too far out to really predict the specifics with that and even if that will happen. So just keep that in mind. Now that I've covered every single aspect of weather aside from earthquakes in October, I do want to thank you for watching today's video. But that's enough talk to it from me. Thank you guys all for watching. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, like the video, and we'll see you guys all again in the next one.